How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and when it comes to DIYers and doing electrical work around their house, why do I say that a wire nut is the good option, the ideal push-in connectors, or just a push-in connector is the better option, and the Wago lever nut is the best option? I'll review all that and we'll go through three different areas. We'll start off by just looking at the construction and how do you use each of these. That's a big part of the overall good, better, best assessment, but we'll also talk about price because there is quite a range across these three different wire connectors. And then we'll finish off with basically what did you say? So we received over 8,000 responses, 5,000 came from Joe's, right? The DIYer electrician and 3,000 came from quote unquote pros, the licensed electricians. So with those results, we can see what is currently be, being used right now from the DIYer to the licensed electrician and are they similar or are they different? So let's jump in looking at the construction of each and also how do you effectively use them? So first up, we'll do the wire nuts, and we'll talk about the push-in connector from Ideal and then the WAGO 221 lever nut. Wire nuts. Wire nuts have a range of wires for which they can work. This is a wing wire nut from Ideal, and it can work from the small end, which would be two 18-gauge wires, to the high end, which would be three 12-gauge wires. Here for this example, we'll have two wires and they will be 14 gauge. So it's right in the heart of the use case for this wire nut. So it's a perfect match. Now what this example demonstrates is an issue that I see a lot. And that is where you would have Romex with solid core wire. So that'd be a 14 gauge solid core going to like a light fixture with a stranded 14 gauge. So you need to bring these two together this will be easier because I have the freedom of just holding the wires in my hand, but usually you're on a stepladder, overhead, holding the light. So this can be a little bit tricky. And the problem is, is if you put these two together and you do not pre-twist, you're gonna let the wire nut do the twisting, which usually manufacturers recommend, but some people pre-twist, and you lead with the solid core. So if the solid core is slightly longer than the twisted pair, you put that within your wire nut, you start your twisting. And usually what you're looking for is for it to bite and then for you to get two rotations of the wire outside of the wire nut. Now, what the problem is here and what the error can be is hopefully you're doing your pull test to test this out, but a lot of people, once this caps on and you felt it, you felt it winding within the wire nut, you feel like it's good to go. But if you've done this for any amount of time, you know this is a pretty classic failure. And what happens is that that stranded piece is not being securely fastened within there. So if we were to take off the plastic and look basically within the threads inside, this is what's happening. That solid core is actually going through the, the threads here of the wire nut. So this is what's internal to the wire nut if you take the plastic off. And then the strands here is really just kind of snaking around and only getting one or two rotations. So if I undo that, you can see how weak of a connection this is. Where the strands are just barely on there. Then in the pull test, the strands will pull right out, even though the solid core is still, the teeth of the threads here is still within the solid core holding it within there. This happens all the time, and, and it's almost about one out of three light fixtures that I open up have a very loose connection. So the wire nut can be a very effective option and it's been around for so long and it is very much proven. But the main reason I'm saying this is the good option is because from a DIY standpoint, you're only doing one or two projects a year and there's too much opportunity for error here. It's all about the installation. It can be a very effective connection, but there is a lot of opportunity for error. So let's look at Number two, and that is just a push-in connector with the same application. Now with push-in connectors, many of the videos many times in the past 
the 14 gauge push in at the back of a receptacle, I am not a fan of. And I have said many times not to use that. So the big design difference that makes me more of a fan for this ideal push in is if we take our solid core wire, usually stripped to about a half inch, and we insert that in, and we can see it's secure within the push pin. Then we take our, our braided strand, making sure that the braids are not frayed off and they're together. So you might need to twist it slightly. And then we can press that within there. So then we also see that the strand is seated. It passes the pull test. So that big difference is the transparent see-through housing. Just being able to see the wires themselves and confirm that they have fully seated within the push-in is a huge difference comparing to the push-in here on a standard receptacle. Not a fan of these, but these push-in connectors, I do think the opportunity for error is significantly less with these compared to wire nut, and that is almost solely why I'm giving it a better rating compared to the good of a wire nut. So for DIYers, push-ins I say would be the better option. And the only other thing I'll show you is I actually did remove the internals of one of these. So what this is showing you is how they secure. So there's just these tabs that will be pressed out of the way when the wire is introduced and then it will that is what's holding it in. It bites into the copper during that pull test. And it, then it presses it down onto the bus bar. So this bar here that goes across these three different tabs is actually the bus bar, and that's what's responsible to tying all of these wires together. So that's the internals of the push-in ideal connector. And since I know there will be comments coming in in terms of why I wouldn't like push-ins on a receptacle, but I'm saying that the, the ideal push-in connectors are a better option than wire nuts, is because on a receptacle, you have the screw terminals that I would prefer a clockwise J-hook connection opposed to using the push-in connectors. And even better, I prefer a commercial grade or spec grade receptacle with the plates here where you can do a back wire. So a straight end strand of copper and then tighten that plate down and use the back wire feature. So that is a little more information on why I don't like push-ins on receptacles, but I'm saying that these are a better option and you're just gonna get a more consistent and secure install with a push-in connector from Ideal. If you're a DIYer that's not doing this on a, a daily basis, compared to a wire net. But there is the best option, and that is a WAGO 221 lever nut. Now, you might know of WAGO's lever nuts from the 222 model, which is right here, but let's dive deeper and take a look at these and why I'm saying this is the best option for DIYers doing electrical work. I'm gonna focus on the 221, but the 222 is a little thicker the levers are a bit harder to pull open, and the most <clears throat> and the most important part, it's not transparent. So that's why I prefer the 221 for DIYers. With the lever nut here, all you have to do is just pull the levers up for the number of wires that you have, and we'll do the same application where we have a 14 gauge solid core. We'll insert that in until it hits the back wall close the lever that will secure the wire. We'll do the same for the stranded 14 gauge. Close the lever. And then just like the ideal, we can see that those wires are fully seated in here. So for me, the 221 easily is the best wire connector because for DI wires, we're not doing this very often. We want to do it safely and securely. And the lever nut on the 221 is the easiest to operate where you're gonna get consistent connections which are secure and safe within your electrical boxes. Now you might not have seen these because at least in my area, they're not readily available at Lowe's or Home Depot. I can get them at Menards, which is a local home improvement store, but you can also get them online. So down in the description, you'll see the Amazon links to the 221 and also include the 222 just for your reference. 
but be careful when buying off Amazon. There are a ton of knockoff brands that look like these, but they are not made by Wago, and I don't necessarily recommend any of those, even though I'm sure they are cheaper. So let's talk about price. So you'll see here the cost really didn't come into factor when I gave the good, better, best rating because the pricing is actually opposite of that. Your cheapest is gonna be your wire nuts. Depending on where you get them and also the quantity that you buy, you're expecting to pay between five and 15 cents per wire nut. Next would be your push-in connectors. The ones we looked at are made by Ideal. Wago also makes push-in connectors. I really like a new one they got coming out in the summer, which is the 2773, so look out for that one. It looks pretty nice, super compact. The cost is gonna be substantially more compared to wire nuts at 15 to 25 cents per connector. And then finishing out with the Wago 221, again, depending on where you get them and the quantity, you're going all the way up to 30 cents to about 55 cents per connector. Substantially more, and technically a Wago connector could be 10 times more expensive than a wire nut, just depending on which one you're getting. That is substantial, but for a DIYer, this is with the, the mindset of a DIYer, the amount of projects you're doing are limited, and I think the peace of mind and safety is easily worth the substantial more cost per connector. But what did you guys say in terms of what are people using currently? And the two different surveys were for the DIYers, the Joes, and the licensed electricians of pros. Now, could I be confident that only licensed electricians answered the survey for pros and only DIYers for Joes? No, absolutely not. And maybe in the results that kind of comes out here because we see it's pretty much a wash between the two pros versus Joes. The legacy and familiarity of the wire nut pulled through. So. 75 to 80% of people use wire nuts. So they are still very commonly used, probably because of the cost, and again, just that legacy of being used for so long. Now, Waco surprised me and came in number two at 12 or 13% of people use those, and this is most commonly. What do you use most commonly? Not exclusively, but most commonly. So I think Waga is really getting some traction and I was a little surprised there are some licensed electricians that seem to be using Waga's lever nuts as well. Comment down below, uh, either way, what are you guys currently using and why? Do you, do you follow the same thought process that I outlined here or do you have a different opinion? I always welcome your guys' feedback and that actually generates a lot of the new content coming out. But back to the use of push-ins, we're at about a 6% uh, push-ins, which is interesting because push-ins are very readily available. You can get them at any Lowe's, any Home Depot, they're out there everywhere. So I was surprised that they're actually lower because Wagos are way less available. So people are really having to go out of their way to get the Wago lever nuts and must really like them. And then there's some miscellaneous, you know, two to four percent use others. There's a lot of different things on the market. So there are a few other things being used for wire connectors. But that's it. Good, better, best, Wire nut, good. Push-ins, better. Wago's lever nut, specifically the 221, is the best. Agree or disagree? Let me know down in the comments. Also, you see in the description, you'll see links to all these different connectors just in case you're interested. And for the DIYer that does electrical work multiple times per year, I do recommend getting maybe a multi-pack of Wago 221 with two slots, three slots, and five slots. I, get, I think that covers you. You'll have the kit, and then if you ever need to replenish that supply, you just get the specific connector that you need and then fill up the kit. That's my recommendation for those that are doing uh, projects on a fairly regular basis around their house. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you take off. We have videos like this coming out multiple times per week to help you with repairs and improvements around your house, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.